the original Game Boy came out in 1989, 12 years before the Advance. Almost double that amount has passed from today to the original release of the Game Boy Advance. Feel old yet? Game Boy mods have improved the consoles, especially the original GBA. But the OG Game Boy? I can't change this. I got this when I was like 5. Okay, maybe it needs a new screen cover. Speaking of screens, the Game Boy has some options. If you're on a budget, you can add a backlight to your Game Boy for about 12 bucks. The backlight mod, it's basically what it sounds like. You add a backlight to your Game Boy. Now online, I have seen that people have mentioned that the screen looks a little washed out. But if you get a Bivert chip and add it to your backlight mod, it improves it drastically. In fact, at the Retro Game Repair Shop, they actually have the kit with that chip already included in the kit. And it's on sale as of the making of this video. But the Bivert chip, along with the backlight, is relatively cheap compared to the other options. But just because it's cheaper, doesn't mean it's easier. It's actually a little more complicated than I thought. Once you open up your Game Boy, you have to remove the back film behind your Game Boy screen. So you have to be careful not to break the screen. And the Bivert chip requires some soldering. You can also choose a different color for that backlight mod if you want to have a specific shade of a color instead of the original green from the Game Boy. Which I think if you're gonna go through all that trouble, you might as well go for the more expensive options if money isn't an issue. I'll have some videos in the description of people who have removed that back film and installed this backlight mod. Now let's move on to the other screen options. For about $60, you can get an IPS backlight that comes with the color palettes we see in the other mods like the Game Boy Advance screens with the color palettes and whatnot. This first option I want to talk about is the RIPS version 5 IPS backlight mod. This one requires you to cut some of your shell up or you can always buy the pre-cut shells they sell on their website. You're going to have to remove some pillars on the inside of the shell of the Game Boy, as well as cutting the existing slot for the contrast on the Game Boy. The reason you need to do this is because this backlight mod comes with its own scroll wheel that is attached to the Game Boy's screen motherboard. The new scroll wheel allows you to control the brightness of the screen, as well as changing the color of the screen itself. This kit actually doesn't require any solder, that is, if you don't want any sound. It's a common theme with these backlight mods for the original Game Boy. You have to solder your speaker onto the motherboard, but it should be relatively easy since it's just two solder points. Now this V5 IPS mod also uses the same screen size as your original Game Boy, so you don't need to cut the actual screen part of the shell. And with this mod, you're basically just swapping the screens in and out and just connecting ribbon cables. Now they also offer that same exact backlight mod, but with an AV out version, allowing you to play the Game Boy on the TV. If you want this AV out feature, you are going to have to solder some wires onto the main board itself. The diagrams and videos that they always include on Retro Game Repair Shop's website are pretty helpful. All you have to do is solder one point to pin three and the other to the ground. Now this kit is a little pricier at about $70, but in my opinion, having AV out on the Game Boys makes recording gameplay a lot easier. Moving on, they also have a funny playing Game Boy Retro Pixel Backlight IPS LCD kit. Try saying that three times. Now funny playing are usually the more expensive screens because they use an IPS screen which many people prefer over regular LCD screens. Now although I said they're usually more expensive, in this case it's the same price as that version 5 RIP screen. It's $58.99 so around 60 bucks and you can get it in black or white. With these screens, you will have to cut the actual screen of your shell, or like I previously mentioned, buy one of their pre-cut ones that they sell on their website. The pros of this screen though, is because it is an IPS screen, it does have the best color and viewing angles, like it says on their website. They also advertise 36 retro color combinations, and it is a little bit larger than the original LCD, hence why you have to cut it. They also mention in the description that some game scenes might flash a little bit, and that's due to the refresh rate of the original motherboard. And they also state that the volume will be a little bit louder because of the limitation of the original Game Boy, but it shouldn't be too much of a major issue. And they do have a video on this one, and it's the same person who does all of their videos on their website. So if you want to see how to install any of their kits, you should probably check out his YouTube channel. I'll have a link in the description below. Again, they don't know who I am or anything. I'm not, not sponsored or anything. Come on, we're doing this again? Also, make sure to test the backlight before installing it because every one of them gives you this warning and they will not give you any returns or refunds if you've installed it. This kit also requires you to solder your speaker if you want sound on your Game Boy. 
And also for these funny playing kits, you're gonna need an LCD bracket, which they sell out separately, which is actually sold out on their website. But luckily you can also get it on a different website. You can go to handheldlegends.com and they have the funny playing bracket for about four bucks. Or you can also find it on eBay, but it's gonna be more expensive even though it's from the same seller. In fact, Handheld Legend has all their stock on eBay if you wanna buy them there. Another option you can buy is the OSD Backlight Mod Kit. That one's a little cheaper, about $52.99, but it's the same deal. This one does include that screen bracket that you have to buy separately for the Funny Plane Kit, and it's basically the same deal. You have to cut your shell again because the screen is a little bit bigger, and you also have to cut into that little contrast dialer box because it also has its own scroll wheel on the motherboard. But the difference in this one is, I guess, the software inside of the motherboard because when you press a click wheel in, you actually get a little menu and you can change the brightness. You can also change the pixel effect and you can change the colors as well. The diagram also shows that you can go back to the factory settings. And although I think the IPS screens would probably look better just because they're IPS, I kind of like this screen a little better. According to the description, you don't have to worry about having the screen perfectly adjusted to your Game Boy because you can adjust the image once it's installed. And again, there's a video on this one by the same guy and they go over just exactly that. You can position the screen if it's too far down or too far up. And that comes in handy because sometimes, you know, you set up everything and the screen's a little tilted or a little cut off and you have to open up your Game Boy again and readjust everything. And I do like that these kits went for a physical button to change the different settings because sometimes the touch buttons on my Game Boy Advance are accidentally pressed. But that's also my fault because they were supposed to be installed at the top and I put them at the bottom. Not because I'm too lazy or anything to change it. And one last note on this kit is that it also doesn't have any sound if you don't solder the speaker onto your Game Boy. Now the last one I want to go over on this retro game repair shop website is the Game Boy 2.6 IPS backlight LCD kit. This one is around the price of all the other ones, $58.99 on their website. And this one's a little bit different. First, I like that they used a green motherboard just like the original Game Boy. And this one will also require you to cut the screen part of the shell a little bit. But the main difference of this one is that it requires no soldering at all. In the description, they did mention that there was a minor update to the PCB version. And they'll have the speaker pre-soldered for you because they mentioned that it can easily fall off. And another difference from this one is this one doesn't have that scroll wheel from the other ones and it's just a touch control. Kind of like the Game Boy ones I mentioned earlier. And the screen is actually dark gray instead of black. So according to them, it'll be closer to the original Nintendo color than the other screens. And they do mention that there is no frame or LCD bracket for this one. So just keep in mind when tightening up the screws not to overdo it because you can damage the screen itself. So if you really don't want to solder anything, this would be the one to go with. And of course, they also sell individual parts for all those kits in case you need a backup or you broke something. And over on the Handheld Legend website, they have the same screens funny playing. They have the version 5 OSD one. They have the OSD IPS screen. Now, what I like about this website that I didn't realize Retro Game Repair Shop doesn't have is that they have customer reviews. So if you like to check out reviews from other people, you probably should go to this website. And they also have a little section that says pairs well with, so it has items that the screen you're getting for is compatible with. Although they do have the same thing in the retro game repair shop, but it's more like you may also like, so I'm not sure if this is 100% compatible with what you're getting. You'll have to double check the description for that. Now, I mostly only talk about these two websites because these are the ones that I've bought in products for and I've used in my Game Boys. Well, I did buy a battery from Genius Game Mods, but they mostly specialize in just uh, screens or maybe Game Boys that you can already buy that are built for you. Now, talking about all these different Game Boy screens, I mean, it's making me want to actually put a new screen on my Game Boy. But I said I wasn't going to do anything, and I already bought a different screen cover, and I think that's the furthest I'm going to take it. Well, maybe I should get a new shell, too. The Game Boy shells that they sell are what you would expect the original ones and some that are pre-cut for the newer screens. And they're about the same price, although the IPS Ready shells are on sale at the moment for about $10. But you can also get those special UV printed shells that are about 35 bucks, but some of them are really nice like this Blastoise one. They also have some Mega Man, Kirby, and they have a nice clear high quality shell too for about $18. Although for about $12.99, you can get any of the uh, original shell, just a newer one, in whatever color you like. And it does include buttons, the screws, as well as the back battery cover. 
Now that a $9.99 funny playing Game Boy IPS Ready shell does not include the buttons in the kit itself, just the screws and the shell itself. And there's also a video on it on their website as well, showing you how this shell looks compared to the other ones. Now let's move on to the batteries. If you want to upgrade your battery on the Retro Game Repair Shop, they have an option, but it's basically AA batteries that comes with its own charger. Um, it's currently sold out, so I don't know if it actually is a battery you put straight into the Game Boy, but on the Handheld Legends website, they have a different option. For about 30 bucks, you get a battery mod that fits inside your Game Boy and it charges with USB-C. They also sell a custom cover with a cutout to plug in your USB-C to charge your Game Boy. And that's pretty much it for what the Game Boy has in terms of modding. You can also get accessories such as the stickers, uh, you can get acrylic cases to display your Game Boy, and the multiplayer link Game Boy as well. Now in the last part of this video, let's talk a little bit about the pricing because I found the prices to be pretty interesting. Now, let's say you want to get the IPS AV out one, the more expensive one, the $70. Well, you're going to need a pre-cut shell for about 10 bucks. Uh, you're going to need a lens because it doesn't include a lens either for about 7 and buttons for about 5 bucks, And a new speaker for about yeah, $4. Now, if you want to have that custom battery, it's going to be another $30. So, already we're at $126. And if you don't have a Game Boy, let's say you want to buy one and mod the whole thing, I see them anywhere from 70 to about 100 bucks, depending on where you look. But let's go with about 80 bucks. So already we're over $200. Now let's take off an extra 10 in case you want to go with the cheaper options, you know. So about 196, give or take, depending on what you want to buy and what you don't want to buy. But here's the interesting part. I mentioned that the Game Boys were the cheapest, maybe $65, $70, but going off eBay prices, now you can also go somewhere else on a different website, but eBay prices seem to be about around what others are, sometimes a little more expensive than other websites, but on eBay, they have modded Game Boys for $140, $150, and they have an IPS backlit mod screen on it already, and a custom shell. Sure, they don't have the battery mod, but some of them straight up have even this OSD one from the Retro Game Repair Shop. So, in this instance, a modded original Game Boy might be cheaper than buying everything separately and modding it yourself. That is, if you don't already have a Game Boy. But, where's the fun in that? I mean, you don't get to customize it and choose every little part, and you don't get that experience of modding the system yourself. Like I said, there's no fun. Where's the fun in that, hmm? Where, huh? Where is it? Where, where is it, you son of a Well, I couldn't resist. I ended up getting a new screen cover lens and a new shell. I might as well upgrade my screen as well. Uh, yeah, psych, did you really think I would have mod my original Game Boy? It's perfect to me.